And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are your neighbors seeing throughout the neighborhood? And if it's in a neighbor's garden, probably you have the same thing. Because those birds, those bees, those butterflies, the insects, the, they're all, the bunnies, they're all traveling all over the place. And so uh, they just spread throughout a neighborhood. The javelina, they don't just use one yard, they're, they're, they're working the entire street. So uh, welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. Feeling Good okay? You keeping warm? Oh yeah. It's not that cold uh, yet. For me, we went from a week, two weeks ago, a, a sheet covering here, which I love. I'd go, <laughs> I'd go just bare or whatever. I love beaches and just uh, swimsuits and waves. Yes. And then, uh, then we went to, oh, we need a blanket. And mm -hmm. Now we need a blanket and a quilt. And oh, But the windows that. are always <laughs> wide open. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> at the lane house, at least. Yes, I That's do. You. I do like the windows open. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, I kind of like it. Get up in the morning. It's cooler. Have my cup of coffee. Yep. Snuggle with the dogs. It's all good. Yeah. Snuggle with your husband, dear. Snuggle. I'll snuggle Do you want me you. to wake you up at 5 a.m.? Well, to... sometimes it's like at 4 30. <laughs> oh, it's. <laughs> No, okay. Okay. Stuck with me later. There you go. That's what I thought. <laughs> Garden questions. What right. are you seeing? What's happening? What are what are people talking about? So kind of a lot of watering questions. So Randy's question is kind of a good example of what a lot of people are asking. So he's in Prescott Valley. He shut off his irrigation system just with all the rain that we yeah. were having. He knows we're going to start drying out, maybe. <laughs> Maybe start drying out. He wants to know on a landscape that's about two years old, Good. moving into fall, how frequently should he be running his irrigation system? Yeah, so so you're probably watering a two-year-old landscape maybe you know once a week. I mean, yes, it's starting to dry out. Maybe we'll still see some rain, yeah. and then but it's cooler mm -hmm. and the days are shorter, so things aren't using moisture like they were. Yeah. And so probably about once a week, give it a good deep soak, pick, pick a day. We're going to water like it's the growing season mm -hmm. through the end of October. Right. November, we shift it back to about eh, twice a month. So you're still watering through winter, but you, you're at least a month, month and a half out before that happens. Mm -hmm. And so keep moisture in those landscapes. Uh, the fear is those folks that didn't cut back their irrigation, We've had, we were hearing, we we're hearing stories of two, three, five inches of moisture mm -hmm. in a landscape in a week. That's a lot. So, so right. one inch of rain will, will penetrate approximately six inches of soil. That's rough math. Okay. If you're up near Granite Mountain or, or more granity kind of soil, sandy soils, it'll, it'll penetrate a little bit further. Mm -hmm. If it's clay, maybe it's only five inches instead of six, but that's a good rough. That's a good way to, to think about it. So if you had a 10 inch, uh, or let's say five inches of moisture in a, in a landscape for a week, well, it's penetrated about mm -hmm. oh, 10 inches. That's pretty good. Yeah. Even a very deep, uh, deeply rooted tree will be, they're down 24 inches. So it's still not the entire root zone, mm -hmm. even though you had major rain. So I would water it at least once a week. I would say it's something you could do right now, Randy, especially in Prescott Valley, because you have had a lot of moisture out there. And, and no nutrients in your soil, fertilize. You give it some nutrients, some some 744. Come see us, get a bag of 744 all-purpose food. It's a or, or organic, granular food. Fertilize everything in the yard. And it's going to bring out that color. It'll make those aspens, the maples pop. It'll, it'll green up those evergreens so they really have that rich blue, rich greens. That's going to be probably even more important those folks out in the valley areas than, than water. Okay. So yes, not time to stop watering. No, no. <laughs> November, wait till November. Right. So yeah. Right. Okay. So our next question is from E. Now this one's from Jennifer out in Chino. Jennifer. Hey Jennifer. So she was, she wants to, she has a chain link fence. She wants to put something on to kind of get a screen between her and a yeah. neighbor. She was told the only evergreen that likes full sun would be honeysuckle. Okay. And so she just wanted to know if you had any other suggestions. Well, I love it when women ask me suggestions. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, there's a couple. So, so honeysuckle is the number one seller. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Takes full sun, takes that wind that you have out okay. there. Uh, but there's also another one called akibia. Mm -hmm. Akibia is a very strong, very fast, almost, almost too almost fast, too fast <laughs> guys, grower. 
that would do really well if you've got a chain link fence that's got partially sun mm -hmm. and partially shade. Let's say there's a tree there yeah. and it only gets morning sun and afternoon shade. Mm -hmm. Another classic is English ivy. You can put that yeah. out there. It doesn't like full sun in summer with that wind that you got out there, but it will take a lot of sun. It just will. It just gets a little burned in the in the in the summer, mm -hmm. June, July before the monsoons come, and then it's glorious. So if you got any shade at all on the north side of your house, you could take a section of it, go into shivy, then go a section and go uh, a honeysuckle, then go a section and go akebia, and it would be beautiful. Advice I can give you is don't go plant one, then another different one, then another different one. Think in odd numbers, take take three honeysuckles and, and put them one, one per eight foot section, then change it to honeysuckle eight, one per eight foot section, then change it to one per eight foot section of akebia. That way you get blocks of beautiful vines showing up and it will mm -hmm. look more natural, more like a, a secret garden than it is, uh, than just haphazard, I don't know, just, just something <laughs> I've seen that seems to work for folks. Uh -huh. Okay. Any suggestion? Anything you got? Or? For evergreen, it's hard. Yeah. You know, there's lots of really great vines, but yeah, they go dormant in the winter time. Yeah, most of them but do. So the you, most famous you, of them here locally is trumpet vine. Mm -hmm. It's got that great big red flower that hummingbirds just yeah. just love. Uh, so that's one that you could do and sprinkle it in there, but it is deciduous. But don't commit the whole row. Just have some green, mm -hmm. and then put some flowering things, and then put some more green. So yeah. there's a way, especially those big properties out right. there. She's probably talking a hundred feet of of uh, of vine or, or mm -hmm. fence. So one per every eight foot or one per panel mm -hmm. seems to be a pretty good mix yeah. for most of your vines. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, so Ava feels like some of her spruce and pine have just kind of faded in color. Yeah. They just don't have that big, rich color that she's come to yeah. expect. How would you go about getting that color, that richness back in? Yeah, what happens is, especially your evergreens are more sensitive. So you've had a lot of rain, but you've irrigated more than usual. Mm -hmm. And so it has flushed all those nutrients that you've had, wherever you're at, Ava, that's flushed all those nutrients out of the ground. And evergreens really benefit from minerals. Mm -hmm. So they really like iron and sulfur and aluminum and magnesium. They really benefit from these. So two things. One, get a, a, a well-balanced food that has your minor trace elements. I would suggest, but I'm very biased because I know local gardening. I made my own food for us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all-purpose plant food. Yep. It's cottonseed meal. It's bird guano. And all of those nutrients that we're talking about, it brings that color out. It's amazing how it works. Evergreens think they've died and gone to heaven. It's like a steak of potato mm -hmm. for, for evergreens. Mm -hmm. But in addition, if you really want that rich silver coming out of those Colorado spruce, the, the bright colors of that, that bright blue coming from those Arizona cypress, in addition, at the same time, do this right now. So now between before, before Halloween, Fertilizer that all-purpose plant food and aluminum sulfate. Oh, they love aluminum. So it's actually aluminum. Plants will actually absorb it, and they'll put a they'll put a coating, this real rich, deep, kind of three-dimensional color mm -hmm. over the foliage that make gives it that rich color. And it'll 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 look like a brand new plant at least by next spring. So that new growth next spring is going to be, Whoa, I can't, I can't believe those mountain gardeners. What were their names? Where are they from again? <laughs> They're so smart. And it'll be amazing. But all purpose plant food, aluminum sulfate, it'll be a game changer. So okay. just good questions this week. Yeah. So Ken and Lisa Lane, the mountain gardeners, we'll be back with more right after this. <laughs> 